am Rose McDonough and this is part two of pasta making. If you were watching before, I have taken a food processor, so simple, some flour, some eggs, a little bit of salt, some olive oil, and the last thing I had to put in is a little bit of water to have it pull together. After I kneaded it for a few minutes, it was gorgeous. I have let this sit supposed to do about 30 to 30 minutes or it could be overnight by the time I got all of my stuff gathered together it's probably been closer to 45 minutes that we have done that you want to check your dough it is now soft I'm putting my finger in and it is coming right back out again that's what you want it to be it's nice and tender and I don't know how much dough you used I'm going to cut mine into six pieces because it just is easier for me to work with it that way you do whatever works best for you, but I like smaller pieces. I would just as soon have to do this more frequently than to be able to work with and start drying your dough out. Once you cut your piece of dough out, you notice how I didn't cut too far down because I didn't want to cut through my plastic wrap. After you've done that, just cover your little pies back up again and leave them aside until you're ready for the next one. So I'm starting with this and just a little bit of flour. As I put it through this, I don't want to have to worry about it sticking. So I always have a little bit of flour here. I'm just going to touch it up a little bit, and I am going to flatten this out some just to get it started. If you don't have a flour, if you don't have a flour, that's so funny. If you don't have a machine to do this, you can roll your dough out. It's just a lot of work. I'm going to be honest. It is work, but you can do it, and then you use your pizza cutter and roll through, and you can make strands of it, or you can make pierogies that way. When I first started making 40 years ago, I did not have one of these machines. They didn't exist as far as I knew. In my cooking classes, we didn't learn how to do it. We had to roll everything out. But this is so much easier. And if you've never used your machine before, you start it out with it on the widest part, always the widest part. And then I'm just going to touch a little bit here, and it doesn't look bad. But I'm still going to because this is how I was taught to do it. I fold it in thirds and I get ready to do it again. And because this again was how I was taught, I go ahead and I fold it in thirds one last time and then I'm ready to go. I'm going to have to hold this table with my hip here. It's sliding. I use this board just because it's a whole lot easier holding on to my table. All right, so that's what it looks like, and I'm going to go again. Every time I change this, I change it, and I do it too. I always say it looks like a necktie. Don't ask me why. But if it looks like a necktie, you're basically doing the exact same thing of what you need to do. Touch it up with a little bit of flour, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm changing it, and I'm going from one to two. once and twice. Check it. It doesn't feel too badly and I'm going to move it from two to three. Sorry, I can't be watching you and uh, making eye contact with jokes with you and working too. You just have to bear with me. Once and it doesn't feel too badly and two. Notice how it gets longer and longer. There are some people I know who are amazing and they can take theirs, they can hook it together and use their arm and keep going. I am not that person, so I have to keep dancing back and forth and back and forth and switching it. Oh my goodness, I can't seem to get this. There we go. End of four. So that's number four. And I'm going to do this again. And then I'm going to make the decision. Is this what I want it to be? Ah, that's exactly the thickness I want. I don't want it any thinner than this. I am just going to flatten it out one more time. Another country has been heard from. Two dogs have decided to get up. It must be time for them to think about eating. Brooke reminded me today that we always have a live studio audience because we always have the dogs hanging out here. All right, so touching it up a little bit, this is how thick I want it. How thick do you want it? I could go even thinner, but this is what I want for our pasta dinner tonight. So with this, I'm going to then take it 
and I'm going to the other side and I'm going to put this over here. It's all you have to do. If you've never used one before, your handle comes out and your handle goes into the other side and then make sure it's going to roll and you're ready to go. If you feel like this is too big for you to work with, you can go ahead, use a knife. If you have a dough scraper, you can use the dough scraper and break it in half, whichever you have. And that'd be the third country heard from. And you can go in here. You're going to start here. Shoot. There we go. I have to lay it down. And I'm going to come over here. Oh, that's called an epic fail. But, you know, fortunately for me, I can just go ahead and put it back on. It's not that big of a deal. All right. And I'm going to go through. And then I'm going to grab it a little bit. Well, I don't know why that's coming off today. That's it. I now have pasta. Look at that. And I'm putting it in here. And this is where I intend to use the most of the pasta and the flour. I've cut it in half because I would like to use it a little bit smaller. I'm not so good about holding it. And I'm going to put it up. Start turning. There we go. It caught. Make sure it's not folded. You can lay it down. Turn, turn, turn. I'm catching it as it's coming out. And there we go. I've got beautiful pasta and I'm going to toss it with a little bit of flour. What you can do now is just start laying your piles around. This can be frozen. It, you can keep it. Obviously, if I'm going to do fresh, I'm going to bring my water to a boil and you're going to have pasta fresh in just about two or three minutes. It does not take long for this to cook. That's it. How much easier does it get than that to make fresh pasta? Having a machine is great. You should go to the Goodwill and see if you can find one for $14 too like I did. Or you can order them online, of course. Alright, so these are just two piles. The recipe that I used, which was about two to two and a half cups of flour, I used two and a half. That's about feeding four people, is what they say. So easy to do. And again, if you don't have a machine, you can roll it out, you can do whatever. To make your own homemade pierogies, I'm trying to pull this apart, it's clumped up here a little bit. If you make your own homemade pierogies, which is what I started out doing, I don't know, I think I was 22 when I started making it. And when I started doing that, so easy to just do your potatoes and cheese, mash them up, mix them together, roll it out, put dollops of it using a um, either two spoons or if you have something that you make cookies, lay another piece over top of it, press it down, you're done. They don't have to look perfect, but they taste delicious and that's all that matters. All right, last thing here, it's a part one and a part two. I told work I was only going to do one name. Um, Jana Marie Taylor and you commented on the pizza dough so I'm glad that you liked it and I hope that you use it a lot because I know my family does in fact we just had pizza last night and I had leftover macaroni and cheese homemade of course and I thought huh so we did one pizza the traditional way with some pepperoni on it and the other one we put some mozzarella cheese down put dollops of homemade macaroni and cheese all over top of it and a little bit more cheese over top of that baked it and Tyler said it was delicious so you can do anything on pizza and that pizza dough recipe is also great thank you so much Jana Marie Taylor I appreciate that thanks to the rest of you like subscribe share with your friends and leave comments so I know what else you want to see me making for you thanks so much and have a good rest of your day